So now with that out of the way, let's start our coding process. So we're going to go over to IntelliJ and I've created a project called Dijkstra and I've created a class called graph in the source directory. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write some code that is gonna be our main method that's gonna allow us to read all the information from the input file. And this part I'm just going to give to you and I'm gonna ask you to copy it in and we're going to read it. The only thing that's different about it versus what we've done in the past is that the edges have values associated with them, which are the weights on the edges. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a scanner like we always do. And I'll import the scanner class. And now what I'll do is I'll read the first line and this will contain this line right here which will tell us how many data sets we need to analyze, how many graphs we have to analyze. So let me convert that to a number, and that's we'll know how, that we need to run the loop that many times. Uh, as our first debugging statement, just to make sure we were able to read the information incorrectly, tells us how many data points we need to process. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to uh, create an array of these graphs. And right now these uh, pointers will all be null, but we'll read them in into this loop that we have here. And what we'll do now is we'll just read in the information about each graph. So after we read in how many different graphs we have to process, the next line of our input file will contain information about the graph, specifically how many nodes there are and how many edges there are. And so what I'm doing in the code right here is I'm reading that as a single line. I'm splitting it with a space. I'm converting each one of those into variables that I'm storing as integers. So the nodes variable will store how many nodes for the current graph. And the edges variable will store how many edges the current graph has. And now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to set up a, an adjacency matrix. Let me, uh, let me print these numbers just to make sure everything is okay. I've gone crazy with the debugging print statements because I'm trying to make this as painless for you as possible so that you can see exactly where your code is going wrong as you're debugging it. You can, if you're annoyed by these print statements, you can just turn them off right now and turn them on only if you need them. Okay, so we're going to set up a matrix now. And my first question is, what should I put into these sizing variables here for sizing the matrix? Okay, uh, let's see here, who is not helping? Mr. Abbasu, sir, what should I size the matrix to be? So that should be the size of the nodes. And here, how many, what should I put over here? And what should I put over here? I could do matrix.length. I've decided for our particular project, we access matrix.length so frequently that I'm gonna create an attribute called the node length and I'm gonna store that in my graph so that I don't have to constantly type matrix.length. That's just a decision I made, but if you wanna just keep using matrix.length, that will be okay as well. And so now here I'm emptying the matrix out because I don't have any edges initially. I'm gonna use minus one, or I can use integer.max value as the representation for infinity. Either one will work fine. This is just a little easier to print when we print the matrix. So that's why I went with it. And now what I want to do is I want to read in the edges. Now, I want you to see something here when we look at the code. You see that each edge has three numbers. You see that, right? So it's a, it's a from, a to, and, and a waiting. Now, I want to write the code in such a way that if, if they give me a weight, I can put the weight in. But if they don't give me a weight, I can just assume it's an undirected graph and put in a weight of one. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? So I want the, 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 I want the code to work in such a way that I can read in both a directed and an undirected graph. You got that? So if they if they enter the, the edge in with just two numbers, like a from and a two, I want to just assume that the weight is a one and it's an undirected graph. But if they give me a weight, I want to use that weight. And this is the direction I'm going to move in for next year for the adjacency matrix. So uh, the adjacency matrix will represent both directed and undirected graphs at the same time. It'll be more flexible. 
So uh, in case what I'm saying doesn't make sense, it will once you see the code. So we're going to read in the edges. So this is the from to part. These are the first two numbers on the edge. And now what we want to do is we want to know, did they enter in two numbers or did they enter in three numbers? So my question to you is, how would I check for that? So if it's got three numbers on the line, I'm going to use whatever weight they give me. And if it's only got two numbers, then I'm going to put in a default weight of one. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to print out the adjacency matrix we've created. This is also a debugging statement. We're going to need a special method for that. Okay, so basically, we're going to create a graph. We're going to store it in our graph array, and then we're going to call Dijkstra on each of the graphs that we have. Uh, we don't have this ready to go yet, obviously, so I'm going to comment these out. Uh, we do need a debugging method to print the adjacency matrix. This will come in handy during the run of the code. We'll be able to print the uh, other matrices that we have. And what I'd like to do now is I'd like you to write this print matrix method for me. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to print the next item. I'm going to use a slightly fancier print statement this time. I'm going to use a printf statement. And I'm going to do this so that all the numbers line up nicely with each other. And I'm going to print the string. I'm going to print it as two characters. So it'll be a number or a dash, but it'll still take up two spaces. And I'm going to put a space after each number is displayed. So numbers don't melt into each other. And then I'm going to put in here the next item that I need to print. OK, this formatted printing is a skill that's worth having in class. It's not particularly difficult, but it's, an, it's annoying. It's annoying. And then after each row is printed, we need to print a blank line so that the entire matrix doesn't show up all on one line. So I think that's pretty much the gist of our print matrix method. And uh, I think what we should do is we should, at this point, uh, take a little snapshot of what progress we've made. I've commented out the parts where we go and actually try to run the Dijkstra because we haven't written that. But it will be good to see. Now, what's, why is this complaining? Oh, I didn't make it static. OK, uh, so now we're good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our code right here. And I'm going to just copy this part right here into my buffer with a Control-C command. And then I'm going to just run the little piece of code we've written so far to see if we can print the matrix and see if uh, so far everything is good. And I'm going to do a Control-V to paste this in. And I think you can see here that the two graphs are coming in nicely. And so here is the adjacency matrix for the first graph. And here is the adjacency matrix for the second graph. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to create our graph constructor. So we're going to basically turn on this code right here that will pass the matrix to the graph constructor. The graph constructor will return a graph to us and we'll save it. And then we'll call Dijkstra on the graph. So let's write the graph constructor and the other graph attributes together. So the graph, it's going to have a matrix inside of it. So let's call it that. And it's also, I've decided we're going to keep track of the node lengths separately. I called it node count. And I just wrote that so that I wouldn't have to keep writing matrix.length over and over again. And now, uh, going back to our picture over here, you can see that we're going to need a bunch of lists. This list right here is useful to access from various methods. And so we need to, we should create this as, a, as an attribute to the class. And I think we had already shown you previous examples where we did visited lists as an array. We also did it as a hash set. We're going to do a third way today. We're going to use an array list to do this because I'm going to use array lists for these other ones. And it's just convenient if all the data structures are the same. So I'm going to set up my visited list as an array list. 
You don't have to. You could use a hash set or you can use an array. Uh, any of those would work. But I'm going to use a list. And what will be the data type for my visited list here? That's my question. It's going to be Boolean. And so we're going to do that, right? And then inside the constructor, we'll initialize this list and all the other ones. So those are the attributes that we're going to have in our graph class. And now I'm going to start off with the constructor for graph. So I'm going to say public graph. And when you create the graph, you have to tell it the matrix. And here we're just going to save the matrix that is given to us like that. And we're going to save the node count variable. This way, we'll just calculate it just one time. And we'll be able to reuse it over and over again. And now, I need to allocate memory for my visited list. OK, like that. And now, sir, we need to put some falses in there. How many should we put in there? Sir, I could use a set. I, I could do a set. It's just more natural to do an add. And so now we have our graph constructor all finished.